In this video, we're going to talk about one of the main capabilities of the Choice Filter column, commonly known as Cascading Select. This is the idea that the answer of one question determines the options presented in a following question. Here I have my XLS form template opened up, which already contains the required tabs, column headers, and some content to get us started. The most common reason for implementing a Cascading Select in the Choice Filter column is when a form is asking the respondent to choose their location, starting broad like the state, and then narrowing down further like the city and maybe even the neighborhood. Let's use this use case for our example. Here I have three questions. What state do you live in? What city do you live in? And what neighborhood do you live in? All of these questions are select one questions, and I've already created the options for each one of them in the Choices tab. Let's take a look now. You'll notice the Choices tab is quite colorful. This is a good time to mention that you can utilize formatting to organize things visually for your own purposes. You can change colors, add outlines, make text bold and italics, and it will not affect the functionality of the form. Let's focus on what we already understand, the first three columns of the Choices tab, list name, name, and label. We have all of the answer options represented here for the first three questions we're asking. First, state, then city, and then neighborhood. There are some additional columns in the Choices tab that I've colored red for demonstration purposes. These additional columns are used to determine, in this case, which cities belong in which states and which neighborhoods belong in which cities. We have this state column here which is used to identify the state that each city belongs to. For example, Albany, Buffalo, and New York City all belong to New York State. Notice here that instead of putting the label, I've actually put the name. This is very important. Albany, Buffalo, and New York belong to the state that has the label NY, which is New York. Similarly, these cities belong in CA, which is California, and these cities belong in GA, which is Georgia. We've also gone one level deeper with neighborhoods, and we needed to identify which city the neighborhood belonged in, so we created a new column called City and added the name of each city next to each neighborhood. For example, Chelsea belongs in the city whose name is NYC we can reference here is New York. It's worth noting that the column headers of these extra columns are flexible. They cannot contain spaces or special characters, but otherwise it's up to you what goes here. This is useful if your organization uses different terminology when referring to a location. For example, you could put province, district, or continent, country, or district, subdistrict, county, sub-county, and so on. It really doesn't matter. The important thing is that you use what's in this column header in the choice filter column of the survey tab. So let's do that now. In the survey tab, we need to add a column called choice underscore filter. For each question that has multiple option sets to present to the user, we use the choice filter column to determine which set of options will be presented. So, for what city do you live in, we want to ensure that the cities presented to the user is the list of cities that belongs in the state that they chose in the previous option. So, in the choice filter for this question, first we need to refer to the column header in the choices tab. We've used state, all lowercase. So we must again type state equals dollar sign, open curly bracket, and then we take the name from the previous question, what state do you live in, which is also state, and then we close the curly bracket. So here's what this means. The first item, state, is referring specifically to the column header in the choices tab, state equals the dollar sign in the curly bracket with the name inside 
is referring to a different question. What state do you live in? So when the user gets to this question, they will be presented with the options where state is equal to the state that they chose here. So for example, if the user chooses New York, they will then be presented with cities that are in New York. We also need to implement this for the neighborhood question. So we'll go to the choices tab and see we used city. So here we say city equals dollar sign, open curly bracket, and then we take the name where the user is selecting the city, which is city, close curly bracket. And there you have it. Now you know how to implement cascading select using the choice filter column in XLS form.